let you down. Cause there's always that moment where it's Okay, like, I'ma tell you. I did this show, um, I'm so hot, bro. I do a show in Carolina. Mm -hmm. New Year's Eve. You know, you get paid on them type of holidays. My biggest show ever to this day. Still talking about it. It's like, I did a show, man, they gave me 120. It's like 14, like, like, like these were even getting 100,000. Then I get 100,000, so 2014. Fuck my mind up. So my mind, like, he gave me 120. Oh, I don't want number 120. Nigga, I ain't doing no show for six months. Because my smile was set. Like, if he gave me 120, I feel like everybody can give me 120. Right. But I'm not knowing they only do that on certain holidays. Like, I'm still learning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, that 140 dropped down to the shit. I was getting lower. Because I had, because I, I, I was already like a 40 or 50. Right. Now, nah, man, I'm down on that one twenty six months went by. And I'm folks trying to give me twelve thousand and shit, man. Wow. And I ain't got no choice but to take them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Is it that or nothing? So you back at twelve thousand. All right, back at twelve thousand so I'm talking <laughs> this shit slow as a motherfucker. But guess what though? I'm still on the road, I'm still booked every week though. Some mm -hmm. money ain't slowing down. Twelve thousand, that's some good money still. Mm -hmm. It just ain't them forties and them fifties I was getting. Right. But I'm still, I'm still going to Dubai, you know what I mean? Dubai. Dubai will give me more than that, so I'm doing Dubai's and all that. But now, man, Fly ain't talking because of the litigation, man. Fly not talking at all. You know what I'm saying? I can't drop no music. My show money down. Um, man, I got, I got a dark cloud over my head, bro. I probably was the person. I would definitely say I probably was the lowest I was in my life because you got to think, man. I went from here to here fast. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I blame myself, and, I, and, I, and, and, and it's growth. And I know it was my fault. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I might have said some shit six years ago in the interview, a cussing nigga up, and I ain't that same corn no more because like I've grown. So even if I did, I'd tell a nigga, man, don't fault me for that, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm growing, man. You know what right. I'm saying? I didn't know like was it was it drugs involved? Oh hell yeah, man! I was on Molly every day. Oof. But listen, geeked up. Fight down. <laughs> Listen, I'm talking, bro, I felt like I, I couldn't do a show or a song without being on Miley. When did that start? When did the habit start? When the habit started, uh, shit. On the road, when I, when I, first, I, when I first got the road, I didn't, on the road, the $800 show, I ain't drink no liquor, no lean, no mm -hmm. none of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shit, after some type, no, nah, before then, before some type of way, we was doing so many shows, I couldn't stay up. Mm -hmm. So I knew some people like, bro, I got something to keep you up. That motherfucker kept me up. Who said they got something for you to keep you up? Was it somebody from the industry or one of your friends? It's a family member. Oh, family member. It's family. family. It's family. I, I would take them out of the brother them there every, every day, man. And I knew, like, my attitude was saying, I'm, I'm bucking on my mama. You know what I'm saying? I ain't showing up the family event. I knew I was just, I was lost in the sauce. Oh, just how I knew I was tripping, bro. But, I did bro. not want the sun to come up, bro. <laughs> the facts. I, I brought, it was black curtains the all sun, in bro, I was yeah. popping them off before I brushed my teeth, bro. Like, that's how I was starting my day. Like, yeah. you know, you really supposed to eat, nigga, and I thought that I'm going to eat. I'm going to take the out then eat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it makes yeah. you shit. You know man. what I mean? Man, you, got the listen, you can hear your brain listen, man. sizzling. <laughs> but guess what, though? Sizzling. I was making some dope-ass music on it, though. I can tell you that. That motherfucker had oh, my brain. Man, don't do yeah. that. I can't. I, I got to be honest. Yo, I ain't touched nobody now like five years, bro. I started you, here, bro. You, I don't like, you, I had, that's what I'm saying, because when I first started making that start. music, I didn't know Miley, you feel me? So I had to get back just to myself, like, this ain't, nah, nah, you ain't going out like that, little bro. Right. I'm not going out like that, man. Right. I shook that shit, bro. Yeah. I shook it, man, because, like, one day I just looked, I had to look at myself outside of myself. I had to look at myself outside of my body, you trip. I think my mom and I told me, like, you all right? And when she said that, like, you can notice it. Oh, nah, that Mon Duke, I got I to got chill out. Right. You know, and I niggas still respect Mon Duke. Like, I don't give a fuck how much money I got. Yeah. Mon Duke, nigga. Facts. She noticed it. Oh, yeah. I'm tripping. I yeah. ain't touched that shit since. All right. I'm going to go to Trav and then we go get Sweeney in there. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate because it looks like he defaulted, right? And once you. Once you get the taste of that drug, um, that's what you that's what you go to. Even if you clean for a while, sometimes once you start to get that feeling where you don't know what you're gonna do, things ain't right, your life ain't life in the way it's supposed to, then you're like, damn, all right, I'm gonna just hit this real quick, and then you'll see it again. You're like, you know what? Nah, I just need to get this to, to keep me going. 
and you just say, All right, I just need one more hit, and it's, it's one more hit, and one more hit, and it never stops. And <clears throat> what I was going to say earlier was that people think that they know what type of drugs they're actually taking, but the problem is fentanyl has reached everything. Anything that you buy off the street, period, even in, um, perks and stuff, you get a perk 30, whatever, they got fentanyl in that a lot. They're starting to find that out. Once I heard it made it to weed, I'm like, oh, hell no. They find it in everything. And it's not going to stop. It's not going away for a couple reasons. One, it's cheap as hell. Two, it's easy to make. Three, it keeps you coming back. Fentanyl is here to stay. As long as drugs exist, it's going to have the potential to that. And the problem with that is it is way more dangerous than any drug that we've ever seen before. It's way more addictive than any drug we've ever seen before. So it doesn't even make sense. If you don't know what you're taking, if you're not prescribed that, and even then, I, I listen, I don't care what it is. I don't want to get prescribed to nothing. I don't care if I'm dealing with pain or whatever. Like, just don't touch it because you start to form a dependency for it. Your body gets used to that. Once once you infuse something into your body chemistry for a little while, your, your mind's going to form a dependency for it. If you can at all avoid drugs, just stay away from it because it is hard to shake. Even if you do, I've seen a lot of people. I had a lot of friends, man, that would stop for a while. And I'd be like, damn, he's doing good. That's what's up. But then they still revert right back to it. You're like, damn, man. And there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to stop them. That drug is they everything. It's they life. That's like he said. He did it before he brushed his teeth. That's how deep it is. He need that before anything. They can't sleep without it. They need to do before they eat, after they eat. Everything. It's just anything that they do is a ritual. They need to make it a part of it. Don't start that. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Go ahead, Sweeney. Oh, shit. Listen to what everybody said on the panel. I was going to get on my soap, uh, my soapbox for a minute, but I ain't going to say too much more than, you know what I mean, rest in peace to Rich Homie Kwan. My condolences to the family. Um, hope they figure everything out. And uh, the kids are okay and she's okay. Mother and all of them okay. Outside of that, I don't really have much to say on it. All right. What, ahead, what, what stood out to me uh, on a second, well, first of all, uh, Casey, I appreciate you with that, uh, what you stated about the, it seemed like you got a background in understanding uh, the types of drugs and how to impact people. I didn't, I, you taught me something. I did not know that when you get on a certain, uh, when you get hooked on a specific type of drug, there's a very, very low chance of um, you getting off of it. I didn't know that because I did recognize that they have all pumping all these millions and billions of dollars into the, these programs to help people get off of them. But I didn't know that like once you touch certain drugs, it's just over with. So I can understand why Cheryl made that. I can now understand why Cheryl made a statement on there. So it's pretty strong. Uh, yeah. But the second, the second video, what stood out to me is that, and it kind of confirms, you know, what I initially thought about, is it really a pain thing or uh, are you looking at it as a way to uh, amp up your performance? Because it seemed like Rich Homie Kwan what, needed to perform uh, day in and day out. And he saw Molly or his relative saw Molly as a way to, hey, look, you got to get this money. You you slacking. You know what I'm saying? You made a mis you gambled. You made a mistake because you were underwear how things work on the holidays. Whenever you getting booked for shows, this right here can give you that competitive edge, so you can get out there and perform and make that money back. So it looks like, and I think I see this. I see this in baseball, football, and all other sports where people start using performance enhancement drugs. So I think it's safe to say that. Musicians also use performance enhancement drugs. It might not be the same as far as, you know, tapping into your physical athleticism and all this other stuff, but giving you the ability to stay up and focus and perform is is key. So I don't know if there's another alternative that these uh, artists 
could use. I would hope it. I mean, I don't know if they got to reach out to people who've been in the game for a while, or you just got to have it genetically. But it's it's yeah. Somebody's gonna say something. Yeah, I mean, Beyonce isn't doing it. Okay, I've been to a Beyonce concert, a security guard. Beyonce isn't doing it. So, what I like I said, what the the walking zombie thing is, a family member gave it to him. Knowing what it would do to him, his family gave it to him. And see, the thing about drugs, uppers, uppers, Molly, Coke, fun, good times. Close your eyes and then just start spinning around and knocking stuff over in your, your house. When you stop and you open your eyes, you're going to realize you made a mess. You don't want to clean it up. You want to forget about it. So you're going to get high and make more messes. So he ruined his career. And every time he got disappointed, he needed to get high again. This is where you get your downers. You don't want to feel high. You want to feel low. Now, see, the thing about a person that's on drugs is they don't just, they, they, while destroying themselves, they're destroying everything around them. Stopping the drugs is the easy thing. It's them shakes. Because now you got your body hooked onto something that can't survive without it. It's the shakes. It's the chills. It's the withdrawals that's going to see you running back to the drugs. But so now you're in this desperate energy. And let me tell you something about somebody that's desperate. Desperate people would do you anything. So now you're going against your principles. You're compromising your manhood. You're doing all type of reckless stuff to get them drugs because your body is in severe need of it. And every time you get sober, you keep remembering all the stuff you're doing. Now I need to forget. Now, now the drugs is your friend. The drugs is helping you. But you keep putting yourself in this process because guess what? When you get back high and you black back out and you close your eyes again, you're now behind the wheel of your life with your eyes closed, just crashing into stuff. And the moment you start to feel it, you need more drugs because you don't want to heal it. It's a, it's, a, it's a very dangerous process. The most time I've seen people do it is when something painful happens, like they, they have a death in the family or they lose their children. Or they have to have a, a moment of time where they're away from the drugs, like rehab, a supportive family that's going to support them through rehab, or jail. A lot of times, the only time we see people get off heroin, because like she said, she from she from Jigga City. That's the nickname of her city. That's how popular it is. If you're not popping pills, you're not that. My city, heroin. If you are a made man, you do heroin. Because you're tough, right? That's what makes you a man. So when it's cool and it's popularized, and this is this is what okay. city is that? I'm sorry, New Orleans. New Orleans is heroin. And Jigga City is Baton Rouge. Jigga City is Baton Rouge. So we see in this firsthand how it happens. But they go to jail. They got to be in there for ten plus years to get clean, though. If they go do a couple of weeks, couple of months, first of all, they can get it in the jail houses. The drugs is in the jail houses like it is on the street. They compromising themselves in jail to do drugs as men compromising their manhood. So it's a, it's a lot to stay off the drug. You are not in control anymore. When you are on drugs, you are no longer in control and that thing would take you anywhere. So it's, Oh, I wish it was just easy to just take it and get off it. Some people can, but that would be the few, but the many, it yeah, sounds like we kind of it sounds like we kind of accepted that drugs are going to be here to stay. Somebody stated that drugs ain't going to go nowhere. So if if that's the case, not, that's a I human think, thing. That's a yeah. I don't think going nowhere. Yeah, I think the catalyst that really changed the catalyst that changed or that triggered him to even be in the situation he is. I think it was his. And, and somebody else might have spotted that. I think it was his lack of financial maturity. I mean, could you imagine making 140 or whatever, 60,000 and not being able to live on that for six months? I would, I would argue, and, and it might be petty to try to 
you know, lean on this. I would argue that if he knew how to budget that or or create a lifestyle where he can live on, uh, I think anybody is capable of doing it. But if he was able to budget, I would argue that he probably would still be here today.